Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. Powered by artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies, our next guests develop a platform that gives casual gamers the chance to put their passion for gaming to the test and even cash in. The co-founder and CEO of a company called Play with two L's is Sean Gunn. Sean, welcome into tomorrow. Thanks for coming on. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, first of all, any time you got our attention with is you can cash in with something. That's certainly a, a good sign. But what, first of all, do you guys consider a casual gamer? Yeah, so a casual gamer to us is really me and you, right? At one point, we were big time gamers, but we had no no plan or maybe not necessarily skills to be a professional esports uh, player. So it's it's folks that play three or four of their favorite video games on Xbox or PS or other platforms each week and do it for fun. And we've created a technology and a service that allows you to uh, win cash through peer to peer wagering. Very cool. I mean, that's what, right on your website at play with two L's dot M E play dot me is uh, play head to head and get paid. Uh, another attention getter. It's almost like sex. Now that I have your attention, <laughs> I have something to sell you. But it certainly gets folks attention. Well, first of all, why is waging and bettering uh, and betting in video games an opportunity even? Yeah, well, I think a couple of things. I think uh, players have long uh, wanted to kind of put their skills to the test for a prize or for cash, right? And yeah. I think in the past, it's just not been on really solid legal uh, foundation with states and countries internationally. Well, that's changed over the last, you know, three years, four years. Um, the U.S. has made some rulings with our Supreme Court that have opened up that, that path and um, like all things in uh, the U.S., uh, it's a state-by-state -state, um, kind of a decision. So today we can freely operate in about 38 states legally, uh -huh. and we have all the bells and whistles built into our platform from a regulatory perspective to understand what states and geography and age gating and all that good stuff. So our goal is to make a safe and transparent kind of environment. We are not, per se, playing the house, if you will. We're <laughs> just bringing two players together that want to do that. I think the second piece is as we all gain more leisure time, right? And, and many of the tech uh, pundits have uh, told us this would happen, um, that now users wanna find a way to drive uh, revenue or, or uh, cash back into their bank accounts to do uh, you know, the block and tackling, you know, pay their rent and have some, some uh, entertainment dollars. So I think this economy will start to grow even bigger as uh, players understand this is an option for them. Well, let's hope so. And, and I think this is a good way, perhaps. I mean, if you're not against gambling of any sort and if you're if you are, well, fine, don't do it. Uh, but if but if you are finding an opportunity to say, I'll bet you I can beat you at that game. Mm -hmm. why, why wouldn't you do that with a friend uh, sitting on the couch, let alone somebody across the country and have some fun with it? And I'm, I'm guessing that's kind of your idea here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we give users the ability to uh, play their favorite titles, uh, create a match, if you will, on our system. So mm -hmm. age old use case we use is two players. One uh, player wants to play Call of Duty, which is a pretty popular game. Yeah. I'm sure many of your listeners have heard of. Um, and they can send a match through our system to their friends. Um, and we handle all the um, bells and whistles of making that safe and um, compliant through our FinSer tech technology. Uh, or they can kind of post that for the public on our platform. So people they don't know um, can uh, say, hey, I'll, I think I could beat you for 20 bucks in Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do all the things to make sure they get paid and it's safe. So are both players of age? Are you in a, a legal state? Um, does the other player have the cash yeah. in their play <laughs> wallet to, to pay you, right? Which is a big, big problem, right? What sure. we've cleaned up is uh, sometimes, Dave, you and I would find each other online uh, and decide to wager 10 bucks uh, and you'll pay me on PayPal, right, when I beat you. And that kind of never happens, right? That friction <laughs> uh, kind of people welch, you know, especially when we put guys predominantly in, in betting. Uh, we, we don't often live up to our promises on the on the payment side. So play takes all that out of the equation, right? So we make sure you get paid. We make sure it's legal and we make sure that you have uh, plenty of opportunities to kind of win additional dollars. I think that's very cool. So can I assume then that the way you make your money to stay in business is that you take a little piece of that action, if you will, uh, in, as the house? Yeah, we do it in an interesting way, right? Um, we, we also, have, as me being a gamer, I thought it was always, whether it's sports betting or video gaming, 
pretty terrible when you uh, bet someone 20 bucks or put 20 bucks on the game and then there's this percentage that comes off right and <laughs> it's called the vig or the service fee so uh, with blockchain technology we've created our own uh, play token and so we sell those tokens to users in different uh, formats uh, some are subscriptions some are on demand and that's how we make our money and that token is kind of the quarter in the arcade if you will you use that to join a match create a match will be used for other things in the future um, but then when you and I bet that 20 bucks and there's a $40 pot uh, and you beat me, you get $40. So no matter if oh. you bet today a dollar or $200, right now it's still one token for each player. And so users are starting to figure out there's a cost analysis, right? I can uh, kind of win money but still have to pay this small utility fee to the platform. Um, and so that's how we make our dollars. Of course, we do other cool stuff like sponsorship and have now more brands starting to be interested in. Um, so there's ways for us to kind of create that monetization for ourselves, but give the user the ability to uh, make make even more money, which is uh, use, user enjoyment is our goal, right? Yeah, and it sounds like you're doing a good job at that. Do you have a lot of folks playing currently? How new is this? Uh, are you uh, gaining other subscribers very frequently? How is that working? Yeah, so we in the last year, what, as we went commercial, uh, we've now gone from about zero to 150,000 nice. uh, users on the platform. And I think that'll scale. And that's our kind of direct consumer offering through our iOS app. Um, we've also just recently made some announcements. We're going to uh, launch a enterprise version of our service with our artificial intelligence and fin fintech uh, capabilities where we embed that directly into the game. So in the very near future, uh, you can play your favorite game without having to download our app. you will be integrated right into that experience. Uh, so our first uh, partner we've announced there is a company called Hashcube that has about 20 million users globally. Nice. And so uh, business is scaling very nicely from that perspective. We think there's many more of those deals we'll execute uh, over the next 15 months. And in my introduction of you, we talked about uh, powered by artificial intelligence, and you just mentioned AI again. How does play leverage AI? Where does that come in? Yes. Yeah, so there's uh, today's version, which you find in a gaming space uh, before we were able to get to a level where we could integrate or have the opportunity to integrate directly. We wanted to be able to create this opportunity without having to rely on publishers, as they call it, the game manufacturers to do a deal with a small company. Sometimes it takes a little while longer. So the artificial intelligence technology we created allows us to get our users to stream their matches. And that's a very common thing with gamers, uh, platforms like Twitch, who's an integration partner of ours, YouTube, many others. Uh, players will play their favorite title and stream it for others to understand how they play, get little tips and tricks, or maybe they're influencers and have derived a pretty big following. And so when that streaming takes place, which is where we induce our AI technology. So we've integrated with Twitch, and we kind of live on top of that video stream as you're playing your favorite game. And we're using AI to pull out the data attributes that are important for us to understand who's winning on a frame by frame or second by second basis so we can understand and remove that fraud capability. Uh, but also we're doing things like pulling out behavioral data. So, you know, Dave, how do you play a certain player in a certain situation? What are your wager habits in those moments? And as you can well imagine, over time, this is going to be some pretty rich data that um, brands, uh, game publishers, you know, uh, console players, they would all want to understand not just the games you play, but um, how much money are you wagering and are you a whale or um, a kind of smaller player? So I think we th see a big opportunity for analytics around our players out of this uh, AI and machine learning tech, but that's how we're using it today. Cool. And, and for the record, I want to assume that you're maintaining people's privacy and just sort of uh, getting this information for those obvious reasons, um, but not giving away my info. Exactly. So a couple of things we've done um, in my background, I've dealt with a lot of big data and location data companies. And so uh, one thing we've done is we don't collect any uh, financial data or personal identifiable data. So we let our larger partners folks like PayPal um, on that side of the fence who already have your data and are securing it. Um, so we, we create the money movement uh, through that process. On the kind of player data, we anonymize uh, that data as we're collecting it. So while uh, your location of your home or game uh, environment is separate from data that shows, you know, how you played and what games you play. So if we do have any type of uh, hacking events, um, it's really not valuable unless you can kind of meld it all together. We do a good job of keeping that separate. 
Yeah. Terrific. Well, looking into tomorrow, if you will, what is uh, uh, the Web3 use case for play these days? Well, it's multifaceted. So, uh, as you know, one, we've already started with the tokenization and a big piece of what Web3 and uh, decentralized finance is about is creating tokenized economies. Uh, we think that obviously we can take our utility token and, and proliferate that, but or even take it into our own crypto token. So that's an option for us in the future. I think what you'll see us do next is actually partnered with partner with big exchanges that are already in the crypto space and allow users to use various altcoins as a method to wager on our platform. That'll be the first entry point. The second piece, um, which is a big component of Web3, is the ability to uh, take a platform like ours and put it in many different places for users to engage with not just one centralized platform. And so you'll hear us make some announcements uh, probably in the next kind of 30 to 45 days around large scale streaming, interactive TV uh, type platforms, cloud gaming. Hmm. Um, and so think of play as powering uh, other environments where gamers are already kind of participating and us bringing our engagement and monetization to those bigger players and larger communities. Wow. It sounds like you're growing rapidly already, and that's good. And we're happy to be part of letting the world know about it. Do you have a particular uh, maybe majority of demographic type information? Who plays the most uh, with play.me? It's pretty split between our core focus uh, audience today. It's uh, we, we range really at the hyper level of 18 to 35. Um, and it's almost split down the middle from that kind of 18 to 27 and 27 to 35 year olds. We do see spikes on the types of games, right? And obviously seasonality plays a role. So we cover games like Madden football, hmm. uh, NBA 2K basketball. So users generally engage with them around those traditional seasons. Um, but I would say Call of Duty and Fortnite are really big titles for us and, and obviously already have large communities. We'll be adding another kind of 10 to 15 gaming titles uh, to the platform this year, uh, even outside of the, the things we plan to do directly with the gaming publisher. So there'll be a very big footprint and a lot of variety for uh, players to engage with. Wow, very cool. As you're talking, I keep hearing in my head, maybe we got to get you to do an into gaming feature on the show each week or something. We'll talk about that off the air, sure. but it's fascinating sure. the kinds of things that you guys are into and the growth that you're seeing. And I think that's terrific. We invite our audience to visit play with two L's, P-L-L-A-Y dot me, uh, the dot me domain. Uh, is that a country? Uh, I forget. No, it's just we're us being cheeky. Uh, okay. <laughs> trying to get people to, to be versus against each other, play it out in me. So, yeah, got gotcha. you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a, a lot of uh, different domains uh, in the last few years, uh, 27 years we've been on the air and, and watching all these things transpire, end up being countries, of course, but it worked out mm -hmm. for them. Uh, so, but in this case, uh, it's a, an actual legit domain, dot me. So play, P-L-L-A-Y dot me. Sean Gunn, the co-founder and CEO of Play, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. And let's stay in touch because there's certainly more to talk about. Oh, thank you for having us. Uh, and if any of your your uh, listeners uh, tap in or viewers, we'd love to uh, hear from them directly and give them a little giveaway. So we we'll, would love to so follow back with you on that. Very good. Well, we'll certainly stay on top of that with you. Sean Gunn, the co-founder and CEO, play.me. We'll get you there, of course, when you visit us at intotomorrow.com. I'm Dave Graveline. Stay tuned. There's much more to come as we bring you further into tomorrow right here on the Advanced Media Network.